Well, he really is on fire today, isn't he, Rubens Barrichello? And a brilliant, brilliant drive by Rubens Barrichello. Rubens Barrichello is one of the most popular drivers ever to race in Formula One. Never afraid to show his emotions, he drove with his heart on his sleeve and had a passion for the sport that shone through every time he stood on the podium. A protégé of the great Ayrton Senna, he scored 68 podiums, 14 pole positions and 11 wins in a career that spanned more than 300 races and almost two decades, earning him millions of fans all over the world. The 1993 European Grand Prix is best remembered for Ayrton Senna's brilliant lap of the gods when he overtook four cars on the opening lap. And Senna goes through into the lead. But there was another Brazilian on the grid that day who also made a lightning start and very nearly pulled off one of the most stunning podium finishes of the season. In an astounding fourth position is Rubens Barrichello. Jordan's Rubens Barrichello, then just 20 years old, was in his first season of Formula One and lined up 12th on the grid at Donington Park for what was just his third Grand Prix. But despite his limited experience, he shot up the order on the opening lap having passed a host of drivers, including Michael Schumacher and Jean Alesi. But that's the man, Rubens Barrichello, who is the man of the race so far, in my opinion. Barrichello then sailed through the pit stop windows and moved up to third when Alain Prost stalled his engine and lost a full lap. The rookie looked set to take his and Jordan's first top three finish, but fate had other ideas. With just six laps to go, his car developed a fuel pressure problem and was out of the race. He may not have scored his maiden podium on that damp day at Donington, but his stunning wet weather drive left no one in any doubt that the Brazilian rookie was ready to make waves in Formula One. After seven seasons racing in F1, Barrichello finally got his big chance with a move to Ferrari in 2000. He was partnered with Michael Schumacher, who was just about to embark on one of the most dominant runs in Formula One history. But Schumacher didn't have it all his own way. At the 2000 Spanish Grand Prix, it was the Brazilian who came out on top in the teammate battle. With 15 laps to go, Barrichello was running in fifth, but unable to find a way past Michael's brother, Ralph Schumacher, driving a Williams. But then the two of them caught up to Michael in third place, with Ralph harrying his older brother around the Barcelona track as Barrichello watched and waited for his chance. At turn 10, Ralph dived down the inside of Michael and Barrichello closed right up to them before the gap closed. But then at the next corner, Michael pushed Ralph wide to try to defend his position. Barrichello saw his chance and slipped through on the inside to take both of them. He'd taken two Schumachers in one brilliant move. His reward was third position, which he would keep all the way to the flag to seal his second podium of the year in terrific style. Rubens Barrichello took 14 pole positions in his Formula One career, most of them at the wheel of a Ferrari. But perhaps the sweetest was his very first, which he took in just his second season and at one of the toughest circuits on the calendar, Spa-Francorchamps. At the time, qualifying was split into two hour-long sessions, one on Friday and another on Saturday. The Friday session was held in typical Spa conditions, with rain falling for most of the hour until it stopped late on. Several drivers bolted on slick tyres to try their luck on the drying track. Jean Alesi was hindered by a slower car in front of him, and Michael Schumacher spun. Barrichello again showed his wet weather prowess and stayed on track to record the quickest time in his Jordan, three tenths ahead of Schumacher's Benetton. On Saturday, the rain fell even harder, and despite a host of top drivers going out to try to best Barrichello, none of them could get within four seconds of his time, 
and the Brazilian, who opted not to run at all, watched on in the Jordan garage as one by one they came up short. He and the Jordan team had their first pole position, which at the time made him the youngest driver ever to do so. La Formula 1 era era un momento più glorioso che poteva arrivare. Una pole position qua è veramente un momento molto speciale. Rubens Barrichello didn't manage to stand on the F1 podium in his debut season. But the following year, he only had to wait until the second race to secure his first top three finish. The Brazilian outqualified his teammate Aguri Suzuki by a whopping 1.5 seconds to put his Jordan eighth on the grid for the 1994 Pacific Grand Prix at Aida in Japan. When the lights went out, he kept out of trouble as Mika Hakkinen tipped pole sitter Ayrton Senna into a spin and out of the race. With Senna's Williams then hit by the Ferrari of Nicola Larini, Barrichello took advantage of the melee to squeeze past Martin Brundel for fifth. The Brazilian brilliantly fending off numerous attacks from the Englishman as the race progressed. Martin Brundle challenging for third. And Barrichello is keeping ahead of the enormously experienced Brundle. Retirements for Hakkinen and Damon Hill promoted him to third, a position he would not relinquish. And unlike his heartbreak at Donington, he held his nerve to finally clinch that all-important first podium. Also, the first ever top three finish for the Jordan team. As a proud Brazilian, Barrichello wanted nothing more than a victory in his home Grand Prix, especially since his passion for motor racing had first been ignited by hearing the roar of Formula One cars thunder around the Interlagos circuit, which was just a stone's throw from his grandmother's house in Sao Paulo. At the 1999 race, Barrichello was at the wheel of a Stuart Ford and qualified a superb third, behind the dominant McLaren duo of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard. He sprinted into second when Coulthard stalled on the grid, but then things got even better just four laps later, when Barrichello sent the huge partisan crowd into dreamland as he took the lead of the race, with pole sitter Hakkinen hampered by a gearbox problem. The fans roared as they watched their hero swoop past the McLaren into P1, a position he would keep for some 23 laps as he drove out of his skin to make his dream a reality. Sadly, it ended in heartbreak when his engine died on lap 42, putting him out of the race. It was a bitter pill to swallow for Rubinho, as he was known to his home fans, but they would never forget the day when he wrung every ounce of pace out of his Stuart to so nearly win his home Grand Prix. Michael Schumacher, Juan Pablo Montoya and Ralph Schumacher were all uncompromising competitors who fought for every inch of track when they were racing in Formula One. None were a pushover when it came to wheel-to-wheel -wheel action, but at the 2002 European Grand Prix, Barrichello passed them all, and amazingly did so in a single lap. <laughs> From P4 on the grid at the Nürburgring, the Brazilian got ahead of Ferrari teammate Schumacher off the line when the lights went out. Rubens Barrichello from fourth on the grid has leapt up to the front. Ralph Schumacher surrendered at turn three, and then Montoya was left behind at the hairpin as Barrichello grabbed the lead in stunning swashbuckling fashion. Look at this, he's going down the inside of Ralph into the Castrol hairpin. Michael Schumacher soon passed the Williams pair as well to leave the Ferraris running a comfortable one-two after their pit stops. But unlike at the controversial Austrian Grand Prix just three races earlier, this time Ferrari did not intervene and order Barrichello to let his teammate through. And the Brazilian cruised home to take his first win of the year. A victory that was built on his brilliantly aggressive first lap. What a fantastic race. I mean, in terms of pushing and performance, and uh, I want to thank everyone at Ferrari because the car was really good. After racing for Ferrari for six years, Barrichello had a relationship with the Tifosi that was almost as strong as the connection he shared with his devoted Brazilian fans. It was entirely fitting then that he took his 11th 
and final Grand Prix victory at Monza, with the crowd cheering him on passionately, despite the fact he was no longer driving one of their beloved Ferraris. Barrichello had left Maranello at the end of 2005 and endured three dispiriting seasons racing uncompetitive Honda cars before the Japanese manufacturer pulled out of Formula One in a shock and sudden decision in 2008. But the Braun GP team rose from the ashes, giving Barrichello an unlikely chance to add to his victory tally in F1. He took his first win of 2009 at the European Grand Prix and followed that up with an emotional victory in Italy. After qualifying fifth, one place ahead of his Braun teammate Jensen Button, Barrichello jumped ahead of Heike Kovalainen's McLaren off the start line and eventually took the lead when he committed to a one-stop strategy while his main rivals went for a two-stopper. Once out in front, he managed the race perfectly, leading home Button for a brawn 1-2, as the Tafosi cheered him on as one of their own. Brilliant drive, Rubens. Brilliant drive. Fantastic job, Rubens. Really, really super. It was Barrichello and Braun's final Grand Prix victory. During his six seasons with Ferrari, Rubens Barrichello was often forced to play second fiddle to the great Michael Schumacher. But there were some weekends when the Brazilian was unquestionably on top, such as the 2003 British Grand Prix. Quick from the get-go, Barrichello took a commanding pole position, with a lap time more than six tenths faster than Schumacher, who was down in P5. But when the lights went out, Barrichello lost places to Jano Trulli in the Renault and McLaren's Kimi Raikkonen. He clawed back second place with a superb move ten laps later. But then the Grand Prix was interrupted by a track invader, which triggered a safety car. Once racing resumed, Barrichello went on a charge, pulling off brave and committed moves on Ralph Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya. Wow, what a move by Rubens Barrichello! before setting about chasing down race leader Raikkonen. The two then engaged in a thrilling wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle before Barrichello eventually made his move. And the crowd at Silverstone is going bananas! He raced on to take one of the finest victories of his career and one that epitomised his bravery, talent and overwhelming will to win. For me, it's, it's a fantastic feeling. The last two weeks, people have been saying so many things about first lap crashing, Rubens this and that, so hopefully, shut up now, I overtook a lot of people. In 1997, Barrichello left Jordan after four years and joined Jackie Stewart's brand new outfit with high hopes for the season ahead. Unfortunately, the Stewart Ford team suffered from dreadful reliability in their first year in the sport, with Barrichello forced to retire from all but three races. But there was one particular bright spot in an otherwise frustrating year, when the stars aligned at the Monaco Grand Prix, and the Brazilian put together a race weekend that delivered the most unexpected of results. He qualified 10th, a full 1.2 seconds faster than teammate Jan Magnussen. But it was race day when it all came together for Barrichello. Rain fell before the start of the race, giving the track the wet conditions in which he often excelled. Ruben Barrichello in the Stuart Ford is up into sixth position. And so it would prove as a host of drivers ahead of him slid out on the slippery surface. He also managed to overtake Ralph Schumacher on track, getting past the Jordan driver at the notoriously difficult hairpin. And he goes through as Ralph Schumacher half spins. Reliability had been the Achilles heel of the Stewart team, but for once, it held together and Barrichello crossed the line in second place to earn the first podium finish for the brand new team in their first season and at the most prestigious Grand Prix on the calendar, where team principal Sir Jackie had taken three victories himself as a driver. An emotional moment for all involved. I can't tell you how happy I am. <laughs> I've never been second at Monaco. Despite his proven potential, 
Barrichello was in his eighth season of Formula One and still without a victory to his name after more than 120 races when the F1 paddock set up camp at the Hockenheim ring for the German Grand Prix. And if this was the race that Barrichello was going to break his wins duck, it certainly didn't appear that way on Saturday when his Ferrari developed an oil leak. He had to use teammate Michael Schumacher's car and setup for qualifying and could only manage a lowly P18 on the grid. A huge crowd of more than 100,000 spectators turned up on race day, expecting to cheer Schumacher onto victory. But the home hero was out of the race at the very first corner. And straight into the barrier, it's Schumacher, incredible, Michael Schumacher is out of the race before it's hardly begun. It looked like being a disappointing day for Ferrari, but Barrichello had other ideas. He vaulted up an astonishing eight positions on the first lap alone, and by lap six, he was running sixth, before passing Johnny Herbert for fifth, Pedro de la Rosa for fourth, and Jano Trulli for third. A miracle was on the cards. After the pit stops and two safety car periods, Mika Hakkinen was leading for McLaren when rain began to fall. Most of the field dived into the pits for wets, but Barrichello gambled. Rubens Barrichello carries on and takes the lead in the German Grand Prix. Staying out on dry tyres and backing himself to cope with the tricky conditions. It proved to be a masterstroke and the popular Brazilian, who had waited so long and worked so hard, finally crossed the line in P1, seven seconds ahead of Hakkinen to take his first ever Formula One victory. Rubens Barrichello winning for Ferrari and he's done it! <laughs> with celebrations that will never be forgotten. Rubens Barrichello gave everything to Formula One, which is why he remains such a popular figure in the paddock and one of the greatest drivers in history.